Hello and welcome to Tennessee Valley This Morning on WTMB. Me. My goodness, so after all morning. this time, you still don't well, understand. Still, well, You're watching the Open. When the Open ends, we're well, on. Well, you can't be gone. Last, who was the last person that spoke? I was trying to tell you to be quiet because you kept on <laughs> right to the end. Uh, Joe and Kim Palo with you, middle of the week Wednesday. Good morning. Hope you're having yourself a good Wednesday. You know, I was thinking the other day two things. Two things I was going to say today. <laughs> I know that you haven't thought any more than that. No, because that's two about things. the max going on. But what I was thinking <laughs> is when folks watch this show every morning, we're on Monday through Friday from 6.30 to 7, live as you're watching now, and then noon to 1. When they watch on Mondays, they are informed, okay? <laughs> on Tuesday, they're entertained. They're entertained. <laughs> right. Wednesday, I don't know what we do. Thursday is more information and education with right, Nancy Kaysen. And then you're back with Dan on Friday, which is more information. Right. So right we're smack dab, <laughs> what are we? Yes, we're just tedious. We're, uh, we're annoying and uh, what was it that I We're a time waster. Say? What? He'd say worrisome. We're yeah, worrisome. We're worrisome. We're worrisome. We're worrisome. We come on, uh, as you can tell, very well prepared every <laughs> right. Wednesday. But, you know, we let our show carry us because we have always great guests. That's right. You know what I'm saying? We usually have the same two great guests, and then we mm -hmm. add in a guest that's right. very interesting. And today is no exception, Kim. No exception, I know. And we today, have the best dog today in the we whole do. world. We do. We've got Ron Moore. I mean, what, <laughs> what, but no, no. Again, I jest. I kid because I love. He loves, right. Uh, we do have Ron Moore Just with us today. Just the heck out of me. <laughs> we do have Ron Moore with us today that will impart some history uh, on he us will? from uh, this area. We also have Julie Thornton with us from yes. Pet Cohen Pals. And she has her own baby with she her does. today. She does. Zeppelin. Yes, Zeppelin. And Zeppelin's a big boy. Yes, if you've not met Zeppelin, you will meet Zeppelin here in just a few. And uh, Zeppelin is a very good dog. That's right. Julie's going to give us some nutrition tips and some training tips maybe. And uh, just, just tell tips. us. Just tips. Right, just tips. Plant tips. your corn early, Julie's that from, kind of thing. Tips from Julie. All right. And then, uh, then we have with us our special guest today is Eric Gardner of Volunteer, Volunteer Ritapest LLC. Right. And Eric, usually, obviously, Ritapest, you know, talk you about. No, I'm not going to do obviously too much. <laughs> but you get the Ritapest, you talk about getting rid of your pest. But Eric also has some other unique things that they Energy do. Energy saving. To things. save you a lot of money. Yes. Insulation wise and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But he's going to talk to us here in a little while as well. Now, it is Wednesday. Uh, we have had lots of rain, cold weather and rain. It's wind. unbelievable. And wind. Wind. It's bad yeah. for the hair. It is. It's, it's bad for the really hair. It's really bad for the hair. Unless you spray the you know what out of it. <laughs> there you go. And then you it's just like, you know. That's right. And people wonder when you go, when you come out of that and your umbrella goes and all that and you walk in and it looks like this, they're like, didn't you just come in for what's up with that hair? Right. Well, <laughs> right. I don't do the that's what so, you get so it looks like I that know. <laughs> we're sorry we're sorry no. and we all know that i don't care what the back looks like right i, I really don't it. either because there's a big hole back there it looks like i was <laughs> shot with a shotgun in the back of my head uh but yeah it's oh, Wednesday. get you some that spray stuff we you know what that. i figured out that is you mean the ron popeil uh this the covers up though that's just spray, spray paint. paint yeah hey, you get it in the color of what your hair I, is and I, you just, one time i was in line and the guy in front of me had, had that. that, and we were outside in line, and it was quite warm. It was in Florida. It was quite warm, and it was glistening, and it was, he. I, I mean, I just think he, you might be getting to where you're not really a candidate for that much anymore. Well, wait, wait, wait. So could be it. this. Now, this you know, could be that you spray it, and the glistening is if you hairspray over the top. Well, it's he like was a clear sweating. Coat. It was hot. It was very hot. <laughs> and it was a clear coat. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it was very, very obvious that that's what he had done. But I think that maybe his spot was too big to have used the spray. He was, you know, he was past Spot's spray. never too big for the spray, Kim. <laughs> he was past <laughs> the spray. I think that's the motto, Ron Popeil's motto for that. Spot is never too big for the spray. So. You got a whole can there. I mean, you can just go crazy. <laughs> but it was very obvious. So um, I'm thinking that if your spot's not that big, that, you know, it would kind of blend in and you could kind of, you know, do. But once you've just got like a... Nice spot that it well, just looks like it was paved. But the know? thing with that is, is now we've come so far since the spray paint. <laughs> now there's Rogaine, which you use and it grows your hair back. Now this is what I've heard. It may be true, may not be. But if you use Rogaine and you use it regularly for a while and then you stop, 
you lose all the hair you would have lost before you started using That's it. That's the craziest thing I've no, ever heard. No, seriously, you That's lose. That's the craziest thing I have ever heard. Kim. Uh, just show that, who listen. even? I Dr. Even Rogaine. Believe, I don't even believe him. I talked to him. That. I think you just made No, it up. is, it's true. <laughs> I'm being very crazy. truthful. A, you lose all there. Now, I'm not saying like the next crazy. day. I'm not saying like this one day you stop using the next day. It's like, ah! No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you gradually lose all that hair that you had grown oh, using the rope. That just makes sense. Somebody out there watching is going, that's right. No, they're not. I'm telling you. All, all right. right. Well, let's get to oop, my phone. I got an email or something. This well, early? let's just go because we got Julie a show. Has yeah, Julie has, yeah, Julie she's got has work, work to do. do. She's she's got, somebody's got to work She's got a bus to move. All right, we're going to be back with Julie Thornton and Zeppelin. And well, before we do, let's go to do. Uh, let's look at our weather forecast if we Ooh. can, Jennifer. I want to show everybody that so they can see how exciting it's going to be. Because today is going to be nicer. Look at this. Today and tomorrow, mostly sunny skies. Now today, a little cooler than tomorrow. 43 for a high, low of 25. Then tomorrow, 52 with a high of 31 or a low of 31. I'm sorry. And then on Friday, chance of rain comes back once again. We are in Cleveland. I know. We are in Cleveland in High the time. High of 52 once again with a low of 43. So uh, we are going to have sunny skies today. The rain is gone for now, for right. a couple of days anyway, but it will return. Well, I liked it last year a whole lot better. I mean, we had snow almost every weekend last yeah. year. If it's going to be cold and right. wet, let it, let it be snow. Let That's it snow, right. let it snow. All let right, snow. well, let's go so we can get Julie on here. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be back with more Tennessee Valley this morning. Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday right now. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin the micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program, Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB television. Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m., or Sunday at 3.30 p.m. I'm Wes Robbins with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. When it comes to employee benefits, we've got you covered. Call me today for the best service and best solutions to your group health and employee benefits needs. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. Welcome back to Tennessee Valley this morning on WTMB. As you can and see, we're joined by Julie Thornton example. and Ron Moore is here. <laughs> no, I keep kidding, Ron, because he's not here. I That's why. That's right. This is Zeppelin. This uh, is the back, the back of side Zeppelin. of Zeppelin. <laughs> Julie Thornton, of course, from Petco She's and House. Mine. And Julie has brought her own personal pet in. And we were just getting the backstory on that. I didn't realize that you had rescued him. Uh-huh. I was working at Petco one day, and this lady came in in tears. It was a Saturday afternoon right before Halloween. And she said, I need your help. There's a, a dog that's dying in my car. And I thought, oh gosh, you know. And oh. I went out there and there was a ball of fur pretty much in her back seat. And 
as I was looking at her, she told me that Zeppelin um, was in a basement, that she had been, she'd been renting a house out to someone and they had moved and it was time for her to put the house back on the market for rent, so she went to clean it and her and an exterminator found him in a ba basement bathroom. Um, he had at least been down there for 24 days, uh, you know, from the time they moved out, it was the 24th of October. And I took him to the vet, at Bradley Vet, and the vet said there wasn't really a whole lot that they could do for him. And um, I chose to take him home and put him in bed and feed him chicken noodle soup. Well, and look and at him. And he minds uh, her. He minds her. This is, uh, <laughs> we, just celebrated, we just celebrated our I third know. birthday together. Well, no yeah. good for you. Well, he is adorable, he is and he's so well-mannered. Well I mean, so well. Um, we can't even bring our chihuahuas. <laughs> the vet said that he was partially blind from being in the dark for so long. Oh. Wow. And um, so I decided to go with the blue mohawk. Um, I've read in a couple books that if you can get people to touch a dog in a certain spot, it helps them not be scared of them. All right. And it, that blue hair is a magnet, especially when I take sure. them to work with me at Petco. Sure. Kids come up and just, you know, you touch, touch it. Old people, everybody, <laughs> they want to touch that head. And it's just got him used to, oh, thank you. <laughs> it's just got him used to being touched. And um, he's had a mohawk ever since I got him. Uh, his groomer at Happy Tales, um, Bridget, she does an excellent job with him. Yes, and, sure uh, does. Yeah, very yeah. good job. And he is. Now, he's just as friendly. I mean, it's when he came in, he just walked right over and, and he'll give you kisses. And well, just how old is he thing. now? Uh, when I got him, the vet said that he couldn't really tell how old he was exactly because he's missing teeth from being malnourished. Oh. So he's anywhere, he was anywhere from two to four. So I put right in the middle at three. Right, so so he's, he's about five, five, six years old. Yep. Wow. Yep. Right. He's a good dog. Um, when I first got him, his his hair on his legs was matted to his side. Oh. I thought he was a short dog because he could only stand up on his elbows <gasps> or what would be our elbows. And me and Stephen Kinder, the other dog trainer at Petco, yeah. took him out in his backyard and worked on him and worked on him and worked on him for four or five hours, shaving and cutting, and all these beautiful long legs came out. <laughs> and it was even, a big dog. We didn't even know it was a poodle. And oh, no uh, I was only going to keep him long enough to get him back to health and get him vetted and just going to foster him. And Sure. Yeah, that he's happens. Mine. He's mine. He's mine. Last week, uh, you brought a little puppy on that we thought the same exact thing. We're just going to take this dog home and foster it a little bit. I think it's become a permanent part of the Palo family now. Yeah, it does. Yeah, uh, it has. Well, tell us on. a little bit about how, I mean, because you have been very, very instrumental oh, yeah. for us in our household because we have skin issues and in, in, in nutritional. I didn't realize that's what it was. And so talk to us a little bit about the feeding of your pets and how that is so important. And we don't realize it because the commercials. Commercials, yeah. The commercials look like you know you're everything's going healthy right. yeah, yeah you're right, going with right, the best right. um it's a sales pitch sorry he's a leaner that's um, all level. I, actually what got me into the nice. nutrition of pets was zeppelin um the vet said that i needed to put him on a high protein no byproduct diet no byproduct i didn't even know what that was so i started talking to people i worked with at petco and got involved in the nutrition program at petco and um a lot of dog foods that you can buy like at walmart or bilo or anywhere not just those places i just use right. those as examples right. Um, some of the main ingredients in those food is corn yeah. mm -hmm. and byproducts. And I don't want to get too in detail, but corn's not digestible. When we eat corn, it's corn. <laughs> when dogs eat corn, it's corn. Right. Um, our digestive tract is super long, so our bodies can, you know, digest a lot, a, a lot better than dogs can. Um, their do dog's digestive tracts, you know, it's only maybe 50 yards long. So their body has to work really, really hard to digest those undigestibles, right. whether it's a byproduct or corn or... You know, a lot of dog foods have the, the chicken byproduct. That's right. not meat, guys. No. That's, that's not meat. Right. Um, and what happens when their body's trying to digest it, it sucks nutrition from their biggest organ, and that's their skin. So if you have that dry, flaky skin, you know, or your dog is constantly scratching, itching and you don't have fleas, right. it's probably what your dog's yeah. feeding it. I know a lot of people have come to Petco and they've been like, I'm at my wit's end. I go to the vet, I get the, the prednisone shots, I give the Benadryl, yeah, I'm putting yeah. the hot spot treatment on. And I start talking to them for a few minutes just about nutrition. I sell them a bag of food and within a month or so they come back and hug me and say, you've saved my life. I can sleep at night. My dog's not, <laughs> dun, 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 you know, scratching. Oh, I know. All night long. It really so, is amazing um, how and, that works. And what happens is, is um, dog food is just like people food on the ingredients. If you'll look at your bag of food, um, it's going to be listed on the back of the food um, accordingly to the amount of what's in that food. And what you want to do is really look at those top five, six ingredients. If you see the words corn, chicken byproduct, or meat, bone meal, or things like that, right. just think about it. That's kind of like fast food. Yeah. Mm. You know, McDon a Big Mac's pretty good, but you can't eat a Big Mac seven days a week. No. Right. Um, and so you want to get a food where you actually see a whole meat product. 
And if you've got some really major skin issues, you want to look for something that's got omega-3 in it and omega-6, uh -huh. the fatty acids. You can find that in salmon meal, a lot of fish, dog foods. Well, right. let me ask you, is it true? Because for a little while we were given biscuit uh, like fish oil. Yes, you can. Okay. You can go to Dollar General or yeah. any store and buy just um, a fish oil multivitamin just like we would take and they usually come in a capsule yeah. that's right. got the liquid on the inside you can just take a pen and pop that capsule and squeeze it over their food and it's really going to help put back some of that nutrition right. back into their skin and coat um, there is one small downside to that though when you first start doing it mm -hmm. you might have a little bit of runny runny mm -hmm. yes but you that do. you do that work <laughs> you do you don't, it's no might it's you will you will but that works itself out, you know, with just in a few days. Well, of even doing when it. you change the food, Absolutely. when we change the food, and at the time Bailey has passed since she passed about six months ago, but she was the worst. She was a golden retriever, and mm -hmm. she was light colored, and I mean, she would just have horrible, and she would just and they she shed would, oh, a lot on the bad food. Oh my gosh! Mm -hmm. well, 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 and it completely and biscuit was uh, the little chihuahua. She right. had, she would make she didn't a even have any hair. Yeah. <laughs> she would make well, but see now, biscuit is a great. Chihuahua, she's her hair is like bristly, like a broom, wiry. Uh -huh. But Bailey was part chow, chow part right. uh, cocker spaniel. I mean, uh, golden, uh, retriever. golden, golden retriever. retriever. I'm sorry, but her skin. She was a blonde dog. So mm -hmm. I've heard too that blonde, like maybe him yes. too. Their skin is more, more susceptible. Yes, it right. is. They told us that from the very beginning. But she was allergic to everything. She was allergic to fleas. I mean, you know, Anything. and we had her on. I mean, they had put her on Prozac. <laughs> yeah, on the, the lampshade on the so, head. Right. I mean, and the I, food something was that it. I really try to like beat people to death with on this information is yes, this food is going to cost more. Yes. Yeah. Bottom line. Right. But two but you're worth it, aren't you? The dog is worth it. But one, mm -hmm. you're not going to eat. They're we aren't. The dog is not going to eat as much of this food because they actually get full right. from the food. So the bag of food lasts longer. And two, in the long run, looking at your senior years of your of your pet, you're going to have less vet bills. Vet bills, exactly. absolutely. Less I mean, bills. it was amazing what it did for for uh, Bailey. Now, I think Biscuit, a lot of hers is just she's a nervous wreck because she's the boss of everybody and she has to keep everything in order. So, you know, she'll scratch nervously at times. But yeah. that has still helped a lot her of that's so habit. much. Right, and mm -hmm. habit. But Bailey, I mean, it was it was phenomenal what happened. I mean, and she, she would and, just... And you got to figure so when they're scratching like that or... They're it's miserable. Not comfortable. They are miserable. It's not miserable. I mean, it's not comfortable for them. Yeah, and so it's by helping them to not be able to do that at least gives them a better quality of life. And I guess the bottom line is next time you're at the grocery store, look on the back of the bag of food. Just because there's a pretty bag of food with peas and carrots and blueberries on that bag, I'm there's not going to no say the name, it doesn't mean that that's actually what's in the food. <laughs> right. and, it, and it will be in the food, but it may be like the 50th ingredient. Well, and just, what's so funny is, is that when you because when you get the the very nutritional, it doesn't have any of the bells and whistles. It doesn't look. It pretty. doesn't. No, it doesn't look pretty, and it doesn't have the little chewy morsels and the crunchy little bone they're shaped all stuff. The same. They're, all, they're the same. all the same. And pretty and much even in the bags. Brown, yeah, and pretty I much mean, even in the bags of food where you do see the chewy morsel and the different colored. Ooh, oh, the different. Sorry, I choked him. <laughs> I understand that. Well, I got <laughs> Um, so pretty much whenever you see those bags of food that has all the pretty bells and whistles and all the different colors kibble, that's just food coloring. Right. That's well, not the quick, vegetable. It's not a vegetable. We, won't, we won't dog a brand, but let's name some brands that are good brands for these folks. Um, well, personally, what I feed is a brand that's made in Franklin, Tennessee. Okay. It's called Nutro. N-U-T-R-O. Okay. Um, they have three different levels of nutrition. They have Nutro Max, which is what they would consider their grocery store brand. It's okay. got corn in it, but it's the seventh ingredient. Okay. Then they have Nutro Natural Choice, which is what all my dogs are on, and they have um, Nutro Ultra, which is their all holistic organic formula. There's no preservatives in that. It's a really good food if you've got dogs with major allergies. Okay. Um, it doesn't have even any chicken in it. Chicken is a big thing that dogs have gotten allergic to from eating oh, okay. it for so long, a lot of breeds. You can ask him to sit, and he'll sit for you. Now, do they find do these brands at, at Petco? Yes, Nutro is a good Nutro is a good brand. You can get that at Petco. She wants you to sit. Um, I want you to get off of Miss Kim. Thank you. Um, sit. High five. All right. Thank you. Um, Nutro is a good brand. Natural Balance is a good brand. Um, yeah, we had our Nature's sorry, natural Recipe. Um, there's probably just at Petco about 15 different brands that don't have there those byproducts go. in it, and you don't just have to come to Petco. I am has a all-natural line of food now. Yes. And I'm then, natural, and it's in an ugly brown bag. 
Right, it's not the pretty thing. It's not the pretty, pretty Tra stuff. Tractor <laughs> Supply. <laughs> Tractor Supply sells some all-natural foods. Okay. Ace Hardware sells some all-natural foods. There um, are a couple in the grocery store. Rachel Ray has one. Rachel Ray has six. one. The, the six. six. Michael's, uh -huh. six is that one too? And then the Chef. Chef well, Chef Michael. Michael's is not, it's okay. not natural. Oh, is it and not? Because I, I looked the on there, it yeah. doesn't have the corn. It doesn't have the corn, but it still has the chicken right. byproduct. Okay. But then the, the one in the refrigerator, we couldn't do that I one daily. I love the refrigerated food. But, but if you've got once dogs, you start it, right, yeah. you better be prepared. I mean, Joe I was ready eating. to eat it, right? Joe was like, I opened the bag. It, it I said, smells, smells like smells like little meatballs in there. And yeah, since itch, we itch. just had tiny little chihuahuas, itch, then itch, but itch. when Bailey was alive, there was oh, no yeah, way because itch. she would eat that whole bag, and, yeah. you know, in one yeah. day, and it's like eleven bucks a bag <laughs> for it. I try to tell people when they come to Petco, I'm not trying to sell them. It's not. I'm not a used car dealer, right? You know, and I'm not going to try to sell you the most expensive food on our shelf. But for me to actually see an older couple that's had this dog forever come back in and say, you've changed our whole life, it's worth it. Oh, it it's is. Worth it's it. amazing. Like, I, um, I thank you. Like Our Dan. Family thanks you. Dan Howell. Dan exactly. Howell. He had an older dog that he said, Julie, he won't eat anything and his skin's itching him yeah. and he smells. He smells horrible. And I think within two 20-pound bags of that food, he was... Preaching my praises. Oh, so. he was. Yeah. I mean, yeah. absolutely. So it does so make a, It really, it really, really does. Now, some dogs don't have issues with the food. Some they can dogs digest don't. it and they can eat anything yep. and it doesn't bother them. But other dogs, if you have one that is just continually scratching and just its skin and it has a, the, the food will do the trick. Well, let's, yep. let's look at it this way. If you have a dog, right, that has skin issues and uh -huh. you're putting, buying stuff for the hot spots, you're taking it to the vet. And you're getting cortisone and not, steroids, right. right. Try not food. going right one mm -hmm. and just get a new bag of food like she's talking about and try that. That may be your cheapest way out and that it will probably heal the skin And yeah, And you're going to have little issues there with the changing of the food. Yeah, the changing of the <laughs> for food. For a week or gonna two, have a you're going to have to, yes, little, you are going to have some some uh, some gassiness and some and some change in the stool. But anyway, well, we've got to let Julie get on her yes, way. She's, she's on a tight go. schedule today. Yes. Well, Julie, so thank you so thank much. Thank you all for letting me bring Zeppelin. Yes, yes Sorry, Zeppelin I didn't have a little puppy today. but sweetie. No, this guy is a sweetie. He's just been a total, He's he is a... <laughs> a, a, li a walking testimony of what bringing a rescued animal into your home is. I only have this leash on here for looks. He knows that I yes, took him minds. out of the, he knew that I, he, but, and it's not even that I'm a dog trainer. It's just that I took him from a horrible situation. Right. And I mean, I can't imagine him not being a part of my pack. Let me ask you a quick question that I'm just uh, throwing out here looking at it. <laughs> I know cats have a problem with that, but aren't dogs supposed to have some whisker? I shave his whiskers. I know. I <laughs> see that. And, and does it bother him? Because aren't they supposed to have a No. Whisk? Now, cats, if you they shave their whiskers, they messes up their equilibrium. No, but I shave his whiskers off because he likes to stick his face all the way in the water bowl. When uh, he drinks, he doesn't lap. He actually sticks his nose in the bowl and right. slurps it. And I don't like that all over right, me. Right. So I take him to Bridget whenever that starts being an issue. And Bridget at Happy Tales... Makes him be the mess. There right. you go. Clean Mr. shaven. That's Zeppelin. Right. All right. All right. All right. All right, Julie, thank you so much once again for bringing Zeppelin by and yeah. for coming by. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Real quick, folks want to adopt, as we say. Why buy when you can adopt? You need yep. to adopt. Pals, Saturday, Saturday at Petco? Saturday. Every Saturday at Petco. It may not be Pals. We try to have an adoption group there every single Saturday. Um, 11 to 4 is generally their hours. And you might even find something that's not a dog or a cat. We've done ferrets, lizards, yeah, snakes, was, chickens, there was, rabbits. Yeah, there was a, a lizard or something there Saturday. Bearded and dragon. Also, but yeah. guys, you guys want to go check out Browser is still up for adoption. Yes. And he is a purebred schnauzer. I mean, and I may try to bring him fans. back next week. Yes, yeah, and he was there, and he's dying to go home with somebody. That is he a is great He is pretty dog. much living that in a kennel a right now, dog. unfortunately. Yes, but at least he's living. And he's, and he's, he's registered, living. I believe. He is registered. I know his parents. He is, I mean, yeah, yes, he's, he's got paper. He's a real he's dog. He's a real dog. A real dog. He doesn't like corn. He's a sweetie. Yeah. You guys want to adoption wanna events, and if you can't Saturday. take one home forever, you can be like Palo's here <laughs> and just adopt one for a week. <laughs> Foster one and end up keeping it. There you go. All right, Jane, thank y'all for like having me. Thank right. you so much. We're going to be back Happy with Wednesday. Eric Gardner That's of right. Volunteer Ritapest LLC right mm -hmm. after this. Stay tuned. I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program, Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB Television. Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m., or Sunday at 3.30 p.m.
I'm Wes Robbins with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. When it comes to employee benefits, we've got you covered. Call me today for the best service and best solutions to your group health and employee benefits needs. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all-new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. Welcome back to Tennessee Valley This Morning on WTMB. Joe and Kim Palo with you. This is Middle of the Week Wednesday. We sure hope uh, you're going to have yourself a good day. Thank you for joining us this morning. And we are joined now by Eric Gardner of uh, Volunteer Ritapest LLC. And Eric, thank you for being with us. Well, thanks for having me. Eric. Uh, <laughs> Joe's going to make you look good again. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Eric, let me tell you what. Er, you don't, Eric makes himself look good by what they do at Volunteer Ritapest. Right. And we're not just talking about getting rid of pests. <laughs> uh, in your home. Because if that this were guy, true, I'd hire you. Right. Well, <laughs> this I guy, got one. I got one. This guy can help you in a lot of areas. And we're going to talk about that today because obviously with the winter months, we don't have a lot of mosquito and, you know, hornet. Just and, more and, of the squirrels wanting to get inside. Squirrels and maybe rodents. But more than that, uh, every month, probably you don't even realize it, that you are literally throwing money out your window, outside your door, and letting it blow in the wind. Uh, if you don't have your home well insulated, and most folks don't. So we're going to talk to Eric today a little bit about some insulation for your home and what Volunteer Ritapest can do to help you in that area. Um, first of all, Eric, let's talk about insulation. Let's talk about, what is it, 90% of homes are not uh, insulated yeah. correctly? According to the U.S. Department of Energy, over 90% of American homes don't have enough insulation. And that number really shocked me when I heard about it. Wow. And this is several years ago, and being in the pest control business, we're in a lot of homes. Right. Well, I started taking notice of that, and it's true. You know, most of the attics we go in don't have enough attic insulation. Very few crawl spaces we go in have any insulation at all under mm -hmm. there. And I thought, you know, this is really true. So I started recommending to my pest control customers, you know, you need more insulation. They go, well, I can't find anybody to do it. You know, the con <laughs> Did the you just your hand? <laughs> well, well, at that time, I didn't right. either. I was in the pest control business. So I started, you know, they said, um, this is when the construction started taking a downturn. A lot of the guys that had done insulation had gone out of business. And they're just wanting anyone to do it. So I had been in the construction industry many years ago. And, you know, I knew how to do it. And so I started checking into it. And we began doing it. And so we went to TVA training. Because when I do something, I want to do it right. right I don't right, want to just think I know what I'm doing. I want to make sure. <laughs> So we did went through a lot of training courses. <laughs> He's not me then, huh? <laughs> right, now. <laughs> yeah, I don't like to jump into anything, yeah. you know. So we took a lot of training courses, learned how to do it right. We've become a TVA-approved contractor. So 
not only do you know we know what we're doing, but the TV inspector comes along behind us to oh, make wow. sure we know what we're doing. He checks right. us out, and if it's not right, he'll send us back, and we'll make it right. And, right. and we're we enjoy doing that. We want to make sure we do it right. Well, uh, on average. Uh, how much can you save a homeowner through the course of a year just on average or a month? Well, typically what we're finding, and these are hard numbers because we go back and check with our clients and say, right. you know, how much are you saving? Uh, averaging 23%. Wow. Um, I've never had anyone save less than 20, and most of our clients are, you know, in the mid-20s. We've had a few up as high as 40%. Wow. So it depends on the house. There's a lot of variables, so there's no, you know, we can absolutely guarantee you this much, but it depends on how many people live in the home. Um, the type of heating equipment they use, um, a lot of different variables, type of windows they have, but typically 20 to 25 percent is, wow. you know, the average. Right. Now this isn't over. just for heat though, it also, I mean, insulation is, is very good mm -hmm. to keep your house cool in the yeah, summertime it, it's, as it's well. It's a year-round thing right. and, and most people don't notice it much in the spring and summer when right. the temperature is a little more moderate. But usually in the summertime, the attics can get up to 120, 130 right. degrees. If you've ever gone up in your attic in July, you know that. Well, that heat penetrates down into the living sure. portion of the house and forces your air conditioner to have to work harder. Right. Well, get that insulation in there, not as much heat comes in, therefore your, ins your air conditioner doesn't have to work as hard and it saves you money. That's yeah. the way it works. Year -round, and it's folks. a year-round thing. That's right. Well, now, do you do you just insulate uh, pre-existing homes? Do you do new construction? Someone that's getting a home built right now, do you do we that? We do new construction, and that's a very important thing. I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people think that the builder knows what to do when right. it comes to insulating their home. Well, some do, but most just trust whoever they hire to do it, and typically that's the cheapest guy they can find. Yeah. And they don't do it right. So you can spend another 500 to $1,000, let's say, when you build a home, and if it saves you 100 bucks a month, you get your money back the first year, and you know if you plan on living there a while, it just makes sense. Do it right. And that's what you know. Probably with that statistic you were talking about, ninety percent, that would be where it comes from. Because when you're building a home, that's one way that yeah. you can kind of cut is the insulation, because it's not something yeah. that you really readily see. And there, so therefore, the contractors probably usually go with yeah. the cheapest bid. Well, the, I, 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 would, I can actually, understand. I've that, actually had builders do that. They say, "Look, I'm running a little close here," you know. And, take it easy on that insulation. Can you save me a little money? And I say, no, you'll have to go somewhere else. I, I don't do that. Right. We, do, we do it right or we don't do it at all. Well, that's the thing, I think, too, is because, like Kim said, I, I guess it's like out of sight, out of mind. You don't see insulation. Right. So because you don't see it, you don't understand how important. You can see mm -hmm. a beautiful home, paint it up nice, caulked, all the things that make it look just right. But the insulation is where maybe they're throwing their money away and they don't even realize mm -hmm. it. Um, I know you were telling me a story a little while back about a gentleman that had a brand new home. The money he was throwing money out the window. His bills were astronomical. The utility bill. And when you went to investigate and give him an estimate, you found out there was literally no insulation in his attic. There wasn't even a hole to get up in his attic. Yeah. So a lot of people may have that problem. Well, there's no critters up there. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Not from the inside. But yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. The uh, wow. the builder. You put insulation in in stages. Right. Before the sheetrock goes in, you do the walls and you do all of those things. Uh, but you can't blow the attics until the sheetrock ceilings are hung. Well, they did part of it, but they never had the insulation man come back to do the ceilings. And so oh. the guy wanted me to check it out. I said, well, where's your attic access? And he, well, I don't know. We looked in all the closets and he didn't have one. So <laughs> if they didn't make a hole to get into the attic, I knew there wasn't any insulation in there. There, no kidding. So, sure enough, so he I cut a hole. So I guess you make a hole. <laughs> yeah. Well, he actually made the hole, and he, he said, son of a gun, you're right. There's no insulation up there. Wow. So we blew in 12 inches of insulation, and his bill dropped from in the six $700 range down to about, I think he said it was in the 180 to $200 <gasps> range. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. See, that is incredible. And so if you are experiencing high e energy bills, uh, it could just be your insulation. Don't be calling the utility, Cleveland Utilities, and saying, hey, what's up with this? It's your insulation. Now, do you, uh, do you do all, well, let's, you tell me what type of insulation services you offer. Well, what we do. Uh, we have, I've, I've experimented and looked at all kinds of different insulation. I found the best 
in my opinion, for an attic is cellulose. It okay. has a higher R factor per inch, so you don't have to use as much of it. It doesn't cost as much, so you get a quicker return on your investment. There, there's a lot of different kinds you can use. They have the expanding foam, you've probably seen that. Yes. In new construction, that's great, but in an existing home, there's no way to do it, because you've already got some insulation in your right. attic, you wanna take all that out and then spray that in. It's just not cost effective. It'll save you money, but if you spend five thousand dollars to get it, you know, right. what's, you know, it'll take you a long time to get your money right. back. Ours doesn't cost anywhere near that. Uh, in uh, crawl spaces, they use that as well. Well, when you spray that directly on your floor joist, again, it's expensive, but it retains moisture because mm -hmm. the crawl spaces are a damp You're place. Right, right, right. So. With uh, the fiberglass insulation, we put down a vapor barrier before we do it. We have a moisture meter we use. We check the wood moisture content in the wood, make sure the crawl space is dry enough before we put it in. And then we put the fiberglass bats in. If there's ever a moisture problem, you just remove the rods and take it out. You can dry it out. In some houses, we need to put dehumidifiers to draw the moisture out and mm -hmm. keep it that way. And this is a long-term solution. Everything we try to do, we don't want to do a short-term fix. Yeah. Right. We want to do the long-term solution that's going to fix the problem and keep it that way as long as you own the home. Right. That that's and and that in itself, folks. Again, this is a way for you to save money every month, uh, and you probably right now don't realize how much you probably could save uh, if you give Eric a call. Now I know you come out. I know TVA does estimates, and mm -hmm. I know you go and give free estimates, and then you're also checked by a TVA inspector to make mm -hmm. sure that it's all in line. So these folks have absolutely nothing to lose. If they give you a call, you give them a free estimate, TVA will come out and make sure that estimate, which they have no horse in the race, uh, is correct. Uh, and then you go from there, true? Yeah, what we do is go out and we'll look at your insulation. We'll see how much you currently have. And we'll give you an honest evaluation. But we don't expect you just to trust us because, you know, after all, we are selling something. Right. So what we'll do, we'll hook you up through your local utility, whether it be clean utilities or volunteer energy, We'll hook you up with them, tell you the right person to contact, and get on the TVA program. What happens next is they'll send their independent evaluator out, their inspector, and he'll check it out and determine whether or not you do need more insulation. And he is totally unbiased. He's not going to tell you, you know, something that you don't need because right. he's not selling anything. Right. He's just right. trying to help you. He'll come out. He'll do that. Then if you decide that you want to have more insulation done, Call us up, we'll come back, we'll install the insulation you need, and then TVA will rebate half of what you spend, capped at $500, back to you. <laughs> so, it's a great way. Well, there's a, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's a great way. You'll save money on the front end when you put the insulation in, then you'll save money every single month yep. as long as you live in that home. Hmm. Yeah, and people do not realize that. It, it's so weird and bizarre because you don't think about it, as I said, because you don't see it. Right. And you're not thinking in your head, this this is a, a big way for And I know that, you know, you have those couple of months there in the summer and a couple of months in the winter when mm. it's, you know, just, in, and then it's all the utility's fault and Joe gets always going, oh. they're cheating him up. Yeah. That's well, it. He just gets, a lot and I'm like, probably, yeah, you know, yeah. our insulation might be. <laughs> people get irate in right, January and February right. because it's so high. Then it goes back down yeah, and, and they tend to forget, forget it. Forget well, about. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, then comes uh, July and August and yeah. it's like, you know. You but can't. what well, they don't understand is in, in March and April and May, it'll go down too. Right, you know, it won't right. go down as much, but it'll save you money every single month. Right. Yeah. So now if somebody out there is watching is interested in get you to, getting uh, for you to come by and give them a free estimate, I know this is the Energy Miser division of mm -hmm. Volunteer Ritapest. Tell us the phone number, how they can get in touch with you and, and what they need to do. Or and just, you have yeah. a great website. So yeah, they do. Know about that. Well, that's true. Our, our website is www.volpest.com. You can go there and do a little research, you know, at your leisure. Or you can give us a call at 472-7736 and... I'll come out myself, I'll check it out. We've got several guys that can do it, but if I'm not tied up, I'll come out, we'll check it out for you, give you an honest evaluation. Again, you don't have to trust me. The TVA inspector will come out, verify everything I've told you. You want to proceed, we'll go from there and you'll start saving money. Yeah, and, and I, I and promise And you can me. get rid of your pest too. Yeah. If, if, yeah. You know, while, while he's at it. <laughs> while he's there. If you got an ant yeah. problem or <laughs> yeah, It, it will give you a bulk price. You That's know, if you do we'll several do things, we'll, we'll take care of That's you. Right. And I, I promise you folks, this is really a good guy and he's very fair and honest. And like he's telling you there, you have nothing to lose. In fact, 
with his pest control, he's got like a 100% money back guarantee plus 10%. It's like 110% money back guarantee if they don't get rid of the pest. So everything they do, they do right. And as he said, they study up on it to make sure everything's done right. So you need to give uh, Eric Gardner and the folks at Volunteer Rid of Pest LLC a call. Again, the phone number, Eric? 472-7736. Thank you so All much, right. buddy. Well, we appreciate you. you coming by and talking to us. Well, thanks. Give him a call, Eric Gardner, Volunteer Rid of Pest. We are going to be back with Ron Moore and a little Bradley County history after this commercial break. Stay tuned. <laughs> Kathy Guy with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. Call us today for all your personal insurance needs. With 28 years in the insurance business, I have the solutions and pricing you are looking for. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB Television, Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m. or Sunday at 3.30 p.m. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's right. Welcome back to Tennessee Valley this morning. We are waiting on Ron Moore. He is en route, obviously, this early morning. Hopefully everything's okay. But uh, Ron Moore should be here shortly. But we thought we'd keep Eric for a few more minutes because we've talked about Energy Miser. We've talked about saving you money, uh, getting your home correctly insulated. But now we are going to talk a little bit about pest control because Volunteer Rid of Pest LLC and some of the things they can help you with. This time of year, winter months, I guess folks have got maybe some mice problems because they're wanting to come into the warmth. Uh, what do they need what to do? What about the damp? What yeah. I mean, just because I mean, we've had a lot of rain. I am mm -hmm. so over it. I can't stand it. So, w what are the issues that are out there? Well, that a lot of people uh, think that you know during the winter time that all the bugs just go dormant or they right. they die <laughs> and it, and they may on a really cold day. Right. But we don't get that many really cold days. Right. You right. know, it's very rare for this to be below freezing for 24 hours at a stretch. Right. So what happens, the bugs will go dormant on the really cold days, but on the warm days, they are trying to get into a warm place to spend the winter. And where's the warmest place you know? Your home. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. they, they, try to, they try to get in your home, you know, <laughs> so they're getting in the walls of your home. And a lot of people will call us in March and April, oh, I've got this infestation. Well, the infestation probably started in January and February, right. and they just hung out until the conditions were right, and then they appear. So the, you know, it's always a good time to treat your home year round. But as far yeah. as dampness, yeah. we've had a lot of rain. Um, the rain will find its way under your crawl space many times. Mm -hmm. And you know, most people, if you have a crawl space, don't go under it very often, if ever. I've right. known people mm -hmm. live in a house 20 years. I've never been under there. <laughs> That's right. And so there can be a lot of things going on under there that you don't know about. So what we do, every time we do a treatment, we will check the client's crawl space. 
and just see if there's a pest problem. We may not treat it every time, but we will check it. If there's a problem, we will treat it and we'll let them know what's going on. You know, if we find a leaky pipe, if we find insulation, if okay. they do have insulation, we find it falling down, we'll let them know, hey, you've got a problem right. there. If we find termites, wood boring beetles, wood decay fungus, all kinds of things that can damage your home and be a health hazard, we'll let you know about that. Sure. So people don't just, think about that. They just really, let me ask you this question. I've been, I, this is, uh, I wasn't thinking to ask you this, but I've been thinking this for a while. I oh, wonder, I, I, I've just been, you know, those things that hit you. Where do, I know bees live inside walls, and all, but where do wasp and hornets go mm -hmm. during the winter months? Well, <laughs> they again, go to Florida. I'm those, saying, right. Well, those nests that you see <laughs> yeah. out there, you know, uh, a lot of times they will hatch out and they'll be empty, but there's a lot of them that still have egg cases in there. Yeah. And they just will remain there through the winter. They hatch out in the spring. And but I mean, what about the adult wasps? They the die adults, off. they die usually, and but not always. They will find a lot of times. <laughs> if you'll notice on a like, if it's an even in the winter time, but early spring, you'll have a day that just surprisingly jumps yeah. up into the mid seventies, yeah. and you'll see these wasps flying yeah. around, and you're like, well, where'd they come? I thought they were dead. Well, they get up in attics. They get in right. hollows of trees. They'll find little, you know, roots in the, you know, little holes in the trees, and they'll get in the, you know, okay. and but they'll they just really hang out. they really kind of almost hibernate yeah. in a sense. They kind of go really dormant. That, that's in, what happens. They just go dormant. That, so. Their body functions don't stop, but they go but they very go slowly. Slow. And then when it gets up in the 70s, they're back again. Back again. See, and now the, the ones that, that worry me or trouble me, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I want to ask you how you get <laughs> rid of these, because I know this wasn't our problem until not too long ago, but what about these Japanese hornets? Mm -hmm that when I, I've heard that if they sting you, it's like getting hit with a baseball bat. Well, I've been stung by them. Have you? It's not as bad as you think. They're <laughs> it's really it's big. It's not bad, it's just it, a big punch. You, right? think, you think it's gonna hurt a lot worse than it. I mean, it hurts, right. don't, don't get me wrong. Right. You know? But you know, it's not as bad as you think it might be. And but, now you have a product called Mosquito Guard, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, and so do. that's what I would, cause I can't, oh, cause right in, yeah. in the, I, I like to sit on the front porch and breathe. And then mm -hmm. right about dusk, you know, yeah. and, I'm, and they just love me. I don't know. I'm just so sweet. I well, now, what, what uh, 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 real so, quick, before you answer that question, uh, tell me if this is not true. Uh, if you have an area like maybe up in your gutters, like where she sits, I'm thinking right. that in the gutters, or if you're wherever, if you have standing water, mm -hmm. that is like a magnet for mosquitoes, right? And that's where they breed. They okay. find any, even just, a, you know, an eighth of an inch of water. They can lay their eggs in there and they can hatch out. And then when the larva swims around, then they become the adult mosquito. They fly out and then they look for somewhere to feed. Right. So, a lot of times, you know, people will be on their patio and they get bitten. Well, just, you know, 10 right feet above their head, that's thinking. where they're coming from. But they can come from, other, you know, a cupped leaf laying on the ground, you know, if it retains right. a little water. So they can breed in a lot of different areas. But yeah, we do have this program called Mosquito Guard. Um, we can actually take your yard back. So you can go out and have a cookout. You can sit outside. The kids can play outside and not get eaten up by mosquitoes yeah. and other flying insects or biting insects. Um, this treatment came around several years ago and I was skeptical about it. And again, I don't like to do anything that I'm not absolutely sure is going to work because I don't like to take anyone's money and them not be happy. So I did some research on it and I thought, well, I'm going to try it first. So my mom just gets eaten up by mosquitoes. So first yard I did was mom's. We went out in her backyard, treated it, and she'd go out and water her flowers every night and get three or four mosquito bites. So the first night she went out and watered her yard, not a single bite. She mm. went out every night, would water her yard, and then she started sitting outside reading her books in the evening yeah. and huh. started think, going yeah, back outside. She has a pool in her backyard, and she very rarely went out there after dark because right, she wouldn't cause... get eaten up by mosquitoes. She went for a full 40 days and wow. didn't get a single bite. Wow. And so after 40 days, on day 41, she started getting a couple. Well, we treated it again. What we use is a high-velocity mist blower. It's a backpack mister. We just blow all the shrubbery, the lawn, mm -hmm. under decks, and places where mosquitoes are likely to hide. And it's got a very short residual life. You know, we apply it safely, it dries. Kids can go out there and play. They're not gonna have any problem. It's not like it's a highly toxic right. substance. And the way we apply it, there's such a minute amount. Humans aren't gonna be affected by it at all, right. but a little bitty mosquito doesn't need right. much to no. get in. Right. Right. So, 
So that's the way we do it. And we can guarantee it. You know, if, if you get one mosquito bite, we'll come back and do it again free of charge. And if you're still wow. not happy, I'll give your money back. That's how that's sure incredible. I am. All right, guys, you know it's what you're doing in the springtime. I mean, I know we're not, you know, mosquitoes aren't an issue now, but buddy, come the spring and you start getting out, out there in the thing. Now we have in our basement, and I'm scared to death that our whole family, <laughs> camel crickets. They yeah. will attack you. They, they will, they will come after you. And I'm thinking the, I'm gonna kill you. They won't attack you. you. They're not gonna they bite right you. Well, actually, they're one of the few insects that will not retreat. Right. When, you, when you get right. after them, most insects will run. They will actually come at you. Why, why do they do you. that? What is that? Are they really coming sons. at you? I've got I've, grown <laughs> sons that I mean, what? <laughs> Well, they have very powerful hind legs, yes. and I don't know if they intentionally go towards right. you, but when they face you and then they jump, they do. <laughs> right. And they can jump four or five feet, some of them, the bigger ones. I but mean, what, can... first of all, where do they come from, and how do you get rid of them? Well, they're a lot of people call them cave crickets. Yeah, okay. you find okay. them, you, right. and, and they do have the humpbacks. Some people call them camel okay. crickets, but they you find them a lot of times in caves, which are dark, damp places. Okay. Typically, they will originate under crawl spaces. Mm -hmm. They'll live and breed there. When the population gets high, they start moving out into other areas, such as into the basement. Right. And if you don't have a crawl space, sometimes they just get in the basement. Yeah. You know, they'll just come in from, they'll be in the mulch or somewhere around the house. They'll, one or two will get in there, start reproducing, <laughs> and then you'll have a bunch of them. Yeah. Yeah. And what we do is quarterly pest control. We come once every three months, treat the house inside and out, use odorless products. And we can eliminate those things okay, and well, keep them that, gone that's forever. that's so much entertainment. I mean, because, I mean, I've talked to two grown men and they freak. <laughs> they are scared. They, they are scared of and it's because crew. And it's in the bathroom in our, because the basement is underground. We're the only one in the neighborhood. In mm -hmm. fact, that's where everybody went the tornadoes. They would always come to our house because <laughs> that one corner. And there's a restroom back there and it's in the closet. You know, it was in the closet in there. And every once in a while, one would come out and, and invariably they were in the restroom mm -hmm. when it happens. And so... <laughs> It's been a, it's been much amusement uh, for me over the years to see well, grown I grown can. guys come. Well, their reasoning is that hysterical. they look like they're aliens. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. They don't look <laughs> like a regular bug. It's personal, well, you know. It's personal. I, <laughs> well, I've had hundreds of calls through the years. We have jumping spiders. Yes. And I go down in the basement. I was at the laundry, you know, doing the laundry. I was at the washing machine, mm -hmm. and one got on me. And so you know, we get calls nine, ten o'clock at night. You know, come, please come <laughs> do something. <laughs> So, yeah. That is so funny. Well, okay, we talk about camel crickets, we talk about <laughs> mosquitoes. Another problem folks have, they don't realize, and this was interesting again. Eric's very interesting. He's, talk, he's I'm telling no you, stuff. very interesting thing. If you can retain it, it's good too. <laughs> but uh, I believe you said, I forget how how many uh, within a within say an acre of land here in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. There are termites that live, all, termites live in the ground. Mm -hmm. And if people were to take a, a, an estimate in their yard, there's probably how many mounds of termites under the ground in, their, in an acre of land here well, in, in Tennessee? They estimate, the, at the University of Georgia, there's a guy who, Dr. Brian Forshall, he just does research on termites constantly. And he estimates in southeastern United States, there's anywhere between three to five termite colonies in every acre of ground. Wow. So typical lot in a subdivision is a half acre. So, and, hey, so hey, and how many, I mean, have termites per mound? Uh, it millions, could be anywhere thousands? from a few hundred thousand to a few million. Just depends on how mature Holy the colony cow. is. In I mean, a million is a, not a little small number. No, no, and termites are very small, you know. You can see them with the naked eye, but they're little. But, you know, you get a couple hundred thousand eating on your house, they can do substantial yeah. damage in a few months' time. You get a few million, doesn't take long at all. Well, now, when our first house that we have, the first house that we bought, we had a couple of mounds that that's what they said. We had to have yeah. them treated. They came out mm -hmm. and did something to it, but they they would come out. You could see them. They would yeah. come well, out. Well, now wait. Now they there's would, a difference they, between they the flying termites, true, and the mm -hmm. termites that eat the wood. Eat the, the flying yeah. termites These are not like, a problem. Well, the, the just flying termites the they're the, they're the reproductives. Okay. In, in a termite colony, there's a lot of different members. There's a soldier that has these pincher mandibles that can act, they defend the colony. Mm -hmm. They can't eat the wood. The, okay. the swarmers, the reproductives, they can't eat the wood. They don't have the mouth parts to eat the wood. And then there's the um, reproductive, yeah. the queen, then the, the king of the colony, and then there's the workers. <laughs> they, they make up the biggest number of the colony, probably 
you know, 60, 70 percent of the termite colony are workers. They have the mouth parts, they can eat the wood, and they eat the wood, partially digest it, regurgitate it, and feed the other members that can eat the wood. They actually live on the wood, they just can't, they don't have the mouth parts to actually right. bite it off and chew it and digest it. Well, wow. aren't they just a busy, busy group so of I mean, just think about that. If your people, appetite was people, wood right. and that was your food group, what do you have today? I'm going to have some wood. But now, if you have a mound like that, because we, we would see the swarming ones, the flying ones a lot, you know, and I'm freaking out because our first house was just the, the, the uh, base or the bottom part was wood, I mean, was brick, but the mm -hmm. top part was wood, and I'm freaking yeah. out. But when they came, we didn't have termites in the house, and so, uh, you know, at all, and I mean, you could throw a rock to the wood, and I'm thinking, what are you yeah. doing in the front yard instead of eating my house? But they, they, they hadn't, they hadn't done any damage, and they controlled it. Now, were those, but I guess further down were the, the yeah, boys, yeah, the, right? col the colonies are, well, you know, all over. The, they can be anywhere in your yard. Like I say, in an average half acre lot, there could be two to three and sometimes more colonies. Anywhere there's trees, there's termites. Okay. Because so they, they feed the on wood. They, they eat, eat the, wood, the roots, you know, a dead root. They can't eat a live okay. tree, but they can eat the dead roots. If a limb falls oh, off, okay. if a tree falls over, then they come up out of the ground and consume it. Huh. And when you build a house, you know, unless you treat it, they can find it at any time. I found, there was a house we did a pre-treat on a few years ago off Mouse Creek Road and they had just got the blocks laid and mm -hmm. they were in the process of framing it and we were treating the foundation. There was a termite tube coming up the foundation and that foundation had been laid maybe six or eight weeks. Wow. wow. And they had already started building the tube up. And there's some houses that we've checked that are 80, 100 years old, don't find any sign of termites. So it's a very random thing, but you know, there's, in southeastern Tennessee, there's two kinds of houses. Those that have termites and those that are going to have termites <laughs> unless you protect right. And And people need to know that they're not clear uh, just by having treated wood because termites will eat treated wood too? They will. It doesn't last forever. The treated right. wood, if it's exposed to direct sunlight, usually six to seven years the treatment breaks down and is right. gone. So a lot of people think, you know, we build a deck, it's going to last forever. Well, go back 10 years, check it out, you know. It's probably yeah. probably not looking as good as it did when it was originally yeah. built. We, we built a couple, hat with Joe, <laughs> that yeah. lasted for, that were going to last forever. Yeah. I, I think that's so interesting, and I think folks need to uh, take heed because uh, your house can be destroyed in no time if you don't mm -hmm. get your termite problem treated. And I do know this too, and, and well, I say I do know this. This is what I think. If I think it, then I know it. Um, <laughs> but if someone has a home, and let's say they do have a backyard where a tree is, is fallen over dead, mm -hmm. they probably need to get rid of that because that is just a magnet for termites. Yeah. And if yeah. you have them there, you may have them here. Yeah, like I say, they can't eat a live, healthy tree. But Why? when that tree dies, <laughs> they Why just, can't they kill that tree? It's, <laughs> just, too, just, it's, it's just too, too moist. Hard. Yeah, it's, it's harder. It's got more moisture Zappa. in it. And yeah, just a lot of things. I, mean, I don't know the, all the reasons they can't, but they just cannot infest and, and eat a live tree. But huh. once it's dead, they move very quickly. So if you have a stump in your yard, have a good friend, Bob Ebling, Bob Stump Grinding. He mm -hmm. can yeah. come and grind up that stump and get rid of it. You know, but yeah, you don't want to keep a stump in your yard because the termites will be attracted to it. And a lot of people put mulch around their home, you know, uh, pine wood, uh, ground up bark, all those things, yeah. that's termite food. I now, see. if you've had your home treated, you can do that. But if you haven't had your home treated, you're just, you're just inviting, trouble. inviting trouble. And, and it will, uh, I guess, the, the integrity of the home soon will be, your home could fall in <laughs> if you don't take care yeah, of it. We problem. got a call in uh, McMinn County, it's probably two or three years ago. The guy called us, said, I have termites. I said, well, I'll be glad to come up and have a look at it, make sure that's what, oh, I, I know I've got them. He said, I came home from work today and my bedroom was in the crawl space. <gasps> oh my goodness. He said, sometime during the day, the floor joist collapsed and it's all in the crawl space. Oh my goodness. So it dropped about four feet what to the ground. What are you doing? I mean, you know, it's almost, I mean, because that would have to be just extensive and sometimes it's cheaper to just demolish Rebuild. than just to renovate, it, you know? It, it, it can, in some cases it is it, because right. it's so, you know, widespread through the house, you know, by the time you tear it right. out and redo you it. You do it and then you have, in, oh. in his case, it was just one end of the house and oh. the entire bedroom didn't fall in. It was probably three-fourths of it, so it wasn't quite that <laughs> what Yeah, but what, still, what a I problem. Mean, but I'll yeah, he had to completely, you know, tear it out, put new floor joist in, put new floor in, and part of the wall was damaged. He's had to tear it out, so it probably cost him. I'm guessing twenty to twenty-five thousand wow. dollars to do that, and that's out of pocket because homeowners insurance yeah. uh -uh. typically does not cover termite damage.
So you need to get your problem solved before it becomes a big problem. And so. thank you for, for I guess Ron. For yeah, honest, I guess well, I Ron. Guess hopefully Ron, he's well, okay. We'll he's, find he's, out when he's we. He's probably sleeping. He's probably yeah, he's just sleeping through right it. through it. He's just snoozing right to it. But Eric, you've we been appreciate great. you sitting in and, yeah, and telling just, these folks because yeah, it's always interesting to me to talk about that because those are things people don't know that it's kind of like the light bulb over their head. Eureka! I mean, I've got this problem. I need to get it fixed. So again, your right, phone don't number. Wait until your bedroom falls. <laughs> yeah, don't don't wait. It's four seven two seven seven three six and we'll be glad to come out and do a free inspection of your home. We'll check it out for termites, make sure you have insulation, all the you know, moisture, wood decay fungus, all these things that can damage your home. We'll check them out free of charge. If you have a problem, we'll let you know. We won't mislead you. I always tell my guys I would rather not make the sale and be dishonest yeah. with somebody and tell them they have a problem they don't have. We've been right. in business for 42 years and we've got a good reputation. We want to keep